Snastruck! Hi there, a big thank you to everyone who watched part 1, which got a hell of a lot more views than I ever could have hoped for. To start out part 2, just a quick reminder that if you want more information about how to play these games, I talk a bit about it at the end of part 1. There's also a link in the description that will help you along the way. To sum up, you're just using a program to join a ROM and an IPS file together. It's pretty simple. I should also talk a little bit about how these ROMs are made, and that's through level editors. For example, the most commonly used program for Super Mario World is called Lunar magic, so if you want to try your hand at your own Mario hack, check out the description and download it. Another example would be SMILE, which stands for Super Metroid Integrated Level Editor, which of course works for Super Metroid. I should also mention stuff like the MSU1 patches. These files enable you to replace the original SNES soundtrack with CD quality sound, so you can do stuff like this. Yeah, that's right. You can play games like Link to the Past, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, Secret of Mana, all sorts of stuff, and have it set to high-quality orchestral arrangements. Just so you know, though, this patching method only works with emulators like BSNES and Hygen, or the SD2 SNES flash cartridge. Just in my personal opinion, I'm not too crazy about this stuff because it just sounds too out of place, especially when paired with the original SNES sound effects. But still, it's a really cool feature, and you can even include full motion video in there as well. That's pretty amazing stuff. Alright, let's get to some more ROM-hacked games, and this time I want to start out with sports games, most notably one of my favorite games of all time, Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball. This game has been updated with the 2016 rosters, I presume they're working on a 2017 hack right now, but yeah, this even has the Expos replaced with the Washington Nationals. The only problem is you can't really upgrade the stadium, so the Twins still play in the Metrodome, and the Nationals still play in Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Still, it's kind of badass to be able to play as Mike Trout and Bryce Harper in Griffey Baseball. NBA Jam Tournament Edition has also been updated with 2017 rosters. The Seattle Supersonics logo and uniforms are still here, but the Oklahoma City Thunder players take their places. So yeah, if you've ever wanted to play the old NBA Jam but with LeBron or Steph Curry, here you go. Tecmo Super Bowl 3 has also been updated with current NFL rosters, but no Houston Texans. Instead, they had to put the Ravens in the Houston slot, which is kind of goofy. I should also mention that the original Tecmo Super Bowl for NES also has an updated roster patch, so if you'd rather play that, that's an option too. EA's NHL series has long embraced its roots, to the point that NHL 94 was an optional game mode in NHL 14. In fact, there's an NHL94.com that hosts a huge community of players that still play the original NHL 94 on Genesis and SNES. There's organized tournaments, there's leagues with drafts, it's amazing. And of course, if you just want to play the NHL 94 game with updated teams and rosters, that's there too. I've also included a link in the description to a hack for the Sega Genesis version of the game, since people tend to associate associate these games with the Genesis more than the Super Nintendo. Finally, to wrap up sports games, a big shout out to Cyrus Annihilator on Twitter for letting me know about the updated team and roster patches for International Superstar Soccer Deluxe. I would love to be able to give you more information here, but uh, most of the content here is in Spanish, so I can't really give any specifics. I just wanted to make sure it was made aware that these patches do exist. Also, just to point out, for each of these sports games, no changes were made to the actual gameplay, so you're just playing the exact same game, just with current teams and rosters. Anyway, as I mentioned in part 1, one of the most commonly hacked games is Super Mario World, to the point that there's a substantial community dedicated just to that game at smwcentral.net. They have level design contests and all sorts of cool challenges, so check it out if you want more Super Mario World hacks. For example, stuff like the second reality project Reloaded. This game has an overhauled visual design, the Mario sprite is the same, but the Yoshi sprite and just about all enemy sprites are redone, and you can tell a lot of work went into this because it really looks great. The levels are balanced and not completely completely insane, at least not to start out with, and there's a total of 96 exits, just like the original game. This is a great hack that's well worth checking out, but just make sure you play it on ZSNES instead of SNES 9X. Super Mario Kart is another game that's frequently hacked, one of the most popular being Mario Kart R, which swaps out Toad entirely for Kirby, in addition to all new courses as well as modified graphics and music. This is well made and definitely still feels like Super Mario Kart, and playing as Kirby is a nice bonus. This isn't one of those annoying hacks that makes the tracks absurdly difficult, everything here has the same feel as the original Mario Kart. 
Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island also has its fair share of ROM hacks like SMW2+, Plus, which features 54 brand new levels. And again, like I said about Metroid Super Zero Mission in the last video, this is another ROM hack made by someone who's clearly put a gazillion hours into Yoshi's Island, so you get the sense that they really knew what they were doing. There's not really any new features here, so to speak, but the level design is well done, the placement of red coins rarely feels cheap, and the placement of Yoshi's vehicle transformations is pretty clever. There's also a sequel, SMW2+, Plus two that has 50 more brand new levels, so yeah, if you dig Yoshi's Island, you have to check out these two ROM hacks. Since I talked about Chrono Trigger and Flames of Eternity in the last video, this time around let's take a look at a couple Final Fantasy VI ROM hacks, starting with the Eternal Crystals. This one's been reworked several times over the years, but the latest version has brand new storylines, new music, new sprites, new espers, plus all sorts of tweaks like Gao having a selectable attack instead of rage, Edgar is now a dragoon that looks suspiciously like Kane, Cyan is now a dark knight, it's a little bit of a meld between Final Fantasy IV and VI in certain aspects. It's pretty dang expansive and really impressive. The story centers around the traditional crystals rather than the espers, but it does have the same World of Balance and World of Ruin event shift that happens in the middle of the game. This is an impressive piece of work and worth looking into if you liked any of the Final Fantasy SNES games. If you'd rather stick with the traditional Final Fantasy VI experience, then I recommend the Brave New World ROM hack. This one's much more of a fix or an enhancement of the original game, so it's made the original game a little more balanced in terms of stats and leveling, and as a result, each character fits almost into like a class system here, in terms of what espers and equipment they're allowed to use. So more emphasis is put on what characters you use and when. You don't want to be caught in a boss fight with the wrong party or you're screwed. They even tinkered with most of the dialogue here, but unfortunately certain stuff they added is uselessly crude and unfunny, but still, if you want to play a quote-unquote fixed or enhanced version of Final Fantasy VI, you gotta try out Brave New World. Last, let's dive into some more Legend of Zelda ROM hacks, although you might not know it just by looking at them. This one actually uses the Link to the Past engine to create a sequel to the very popular N64 game Conker's Bad Day, titled Conker's Hyrule Tale. True to form, this faithfully captures the Conker universe, although in an unlikely setting. It's pretty weird to be playing a Conker game of all things in Zelda's clothing, and this game even makes fun of that fact. Anyway, Conker plays just like Link, the game is structured in a top-down adventure setting just like Link to the Past, but it's just very clearly a Conquer game instead of Zelda. You rarely forget that while you're playing it. This is a great ROM hack that demonstrates the sheer amount of possibilities out there when it comes to hacking older games. If you don't think that's weird enough, try this one. It's another Link to the Past hack titled Bruce Campbell vs. Ganon. It rewrites the story of Link to the Past to include Ash from the Evil Dead series. You gotta give points for originality there. Ash, of course, looks suspiciously a lot like Link, but hey, it's a thought that counts. Okay, so this may not be the highest quality ROM hack. There's tons of glitches and the puzzles can be wonky and frustrating, but this ROM hack is just all about having a good laugh at the dialogue. That aspect here is entertaining and well done. Again, it's just cool to see the kind of creative stuff people people are capable of coming up with. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a good rest of your day.